Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump.com. Now, some of you may have noticed, I kind of like Star Wars. Stay on target. Stay on target. Okay, maybe more than kind of. I may need some help. When I started Pixelbump, I knew at some point I was going to do some Star Wars visual effects. When my friend Sean Becker, that's right, I just name dropped Sean Becker just like that. What? <laughs> When he asked me if I would do a hologram effect for Team Unicorn's new video all about the base No Rebels, I jumped on it. So let's take a look at a little piece of the video so we can see what we're going to create. Because you know I'm all about that base, about that base, no rebels. I'm all about that base, about that base, no rebels. I'm all about that base, about that base, no rebels. I'm all about that base, about that base, 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 base. Yeah. Okay, so it's a pretty traditional hologram effect from Star Wars. But when you delve into any VFX based on pre existing material, it's a good idea to get on the same page about what you're going to create, especially with something like Star Wars, which the effects have subtly varied from film to film. So to kind of fill you in on the process that I had with Sean, I've asked Sean to come by and talk a little bit about the process. So let's listen to that now. So Sean, yes, what were you looking for in a hologram when you asked me to do it? Uh, basically, like the whole thing um, with the videos, I wanted to add something a little bit, um, just more variety to the video overall so I thought it might be nice because the chorus um, occurs so much in the song that I wanted to kind of say I, I didn't my, my biggest fear was the chorus getting stale no, nothing toward what we shot or the girl I just you know the more variety the better and this was something I thought that you know could be something that would take you know and I apologize for always saying minimal effort I know as a graphics guy you're hey can you whip up a quick graphic for me and I know I'm guilty <laughs> of asking you that as well I'm just I'm aware of it hey can you just knock this out really quick or could you just uh Finish this, uh, knock it out, but I'm just like, yeah, hey, uh, hey uh, a transparent hologram wouldn't be too hard for Steve to do, right? <laughs> so I basically thought about, you know, let's just keep it simple. I mean, at least like on the shooting side of it, it's it's an easier setup because when you do shoot a production like this, you know, with the girls, we want to make sure that the girls look good. So we have to have hair, we have to have makeup, we have to have wardrobe. Um, the thing about the holograms is that they'd all be wearing a hood and even at some of the examples I'm looking at right now like the hoods are just placed on there's not really like they're kind of uh, thrown on they're not um, it was an easier setup for and I think we get a lot of value out of it so you know going back to just the way that they communicate in Star Wars with holograms I just felt like it was a nice little like fun effect that we could add to the video so I basically um, wanted to go for this hologram effect all right now I remember when I when you came over and I said, okay, now which version of the hologram do you want to do? You were a little surprised because I don't, I, I think it's something that let, until you start studying it, you don't notice the subtle differences of like the Leia hologram. Uh, let's see if we can find a good example of it. Of course not. Well, oh, with the Leia hologram, it's more oh, like that, that's represented as a recording as right. opposed to a broadcast. Right, but her original one, you can see that has the vertical lines, whereas later they start using horizontal lines. In uh, parts of episode one or two, you start getting color in the holograms rather than the blue tones. In the Clone Wars, we start getting the introduction of this white line striping down it. So it it's becomes kind of like, you know, that white line almost acts as like a refresher, almost like it's like a 3D printer, like drawing the image over and over and over again, in my opinion. But even looking at all these examples, like the opacity on all the, the different forms. And it's not, I mean, obviously we have some fan film stuff in here and some like joke parody stuff but the majority of these are from star wars so mm -hmm. you have like shots of of palpatine um you have shots where some of the shots like obi-wan here on camino it looks like has way more uh interference or way more or the there's there's more lines here mm -hmm. uh it's not as clear of a reception so that which makes sense because that i remember in that scene he's um, communicating from his ship on a rainy planet. So right. the reception plays, but like even the different aspects of, uh, what do you call it? Opacity are different. Mm -hmm. But even in this one up here where the, the, the clone troopers talking to Palpatine, it looks like that line exists here almost that they're mm -hmm. redrawing that line, but I mm -hmm. could be wrong. But yeah, there's many, many different, I, I just thought it was in all honesty, transparent effect with a blue filter with like a television static effect and we call it a day. Yeah. Um, Sounds then, about right to me. 
<laughs> and that was my whole thing. But then, like, and like, I think okay, that makes what, the core of it. Yeah, but but there was a lot more to it. Yeah, there is. But you know, I like the blue cast is fairly classic. So you know, even though the original Leia one was vertical, going horizontal again, that's the standard now. And I really like that we picked up this new addition from the Clone Wars. So it feels a little more like an inclusive, like as the effect grows with each film, it kind of picks up stylistic effects from the ones previous and then adds something new. Correct. Yeah, no, I like it. I mean, in the end, I, just, I, I mean, even in all these different examples, even like in the original Leia one, she looks really overexposed. Like, you know, she's very bright. Uh, yeah. And it seems more, I, I don't know what the correct term is, but. Um, yeah, she's definitely a lot. It, it's cruder. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And that might be just a sign of the technology at the time, but I still love the overall look. But yeah, just in this, we, you know, I, I always associate, you know, but I always go back just to the original Emperor scene in Empire Strikes Back where mm -hmm. the Emperor shows up in the hood um, talking and they brought it back for episode one. Like whenever right. you saw those holograms, you know, usually the Jedi were wearing hoods, the Sith were wearing hoods. So I thought it'd be way, a good way to quickly shoot the girls with this. All right, so let's unleash the after effects. And I don't think I've remarked on it in the last couple of videos, but uh, how are you guys liking the new blue After Effects? I'm really digging the new color scheme. I'm really digging the new layout of stuff. So hopefully you're enjoying it as well. But let's take a look at this shot here. And this was shot in daylight, I was told. First thing I wanna do is come in and create a mask. And fortunately she doesn't move much. So we're probably not gonna need to animate this. We'll just kind of scan through really quickly and that looks good and the next thing we need to do is key it so I'm gonna break out key light and we'll just come in grab our screen color we'll take a look at our combined mat and we'll do some adjusting if needed but this is actually looking like it's gonna key really nicely with very little adjustment Yeah, I think that looks pretty darn good. All right, so I wanna duplicate my footage now, delete off that key light effect, and I'm gonna set a luma mat to my top layer. So the colors will always stay nice and clean. Then I'm just gonna grab the advanced spill suppressor, drop it on the bottom layer, get rid of that green edge. Now I'll come in, pre-comp the footage, And I'm going to make three copies of it. So I have three here, and I'm just going to go ahead and name this red, green, and blue. And let's grab our levels effect. And we want to grab the individual controls, and we're going to drop one on each of the pieces of footage. Because what we want to do is separate it just down to the color that it talks about. So for this one, I'll leave the red output at 100 and I'll drop down the green and blue to zero. So now it's just perfectly red. And if I come down to the green one, we'll do the same thing here. We'll drop out the blue and the red so it's perfectly green. And we'll come down to the blue and we'll drop out the red and the green. So now, if I come in and turn these all to add mode, it looks like we're right back to where we started. But what we have now is the ability to shift colors in and out. And what this is gonna do is give us a really nice analogy distortion effect. So I'm gonna take each one of these, grab their position, and I'm gonna add a wiggle to each of them. And we'll just go ahead, add a wiggle, We'll say maybe one second, one time per second, and maybe 10 pixels. And we'll just grab that and we'll put it on each one of these. And let's go ahead and take a preview and see how that looks. We don't want it to go crazy, but we definitely want to have a little bit of a distortion effect. And here I think the amount is pretty good but it's, it's really slow, it's just kind of bobbing around. So maybe I'll increase each of these to five.
Yeah, five's too much. Now it's starting to get a little too wild. So let's try three. We'll just meet it in the middle. And now I think the amount of shake is about right, but I think it's too many pixels. So let's go down to five and five and five. There we go. That's a nice amount of little bit of little edging, a little bit of color variation that we're having. And this is called chromatic arboration. This is something that naturally happens within lenses and certain sensors. You noticed it a lot back in the VHS days. And this is a very powerful effect for compositing. And we're definitely gonna delve into it more later, but right now, that's about all we need to do with it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pre-comp this into chroma effect. And what I think I want to do is come back in here and grab one this one more time. I'm just going to grab the top one here, pop it on top, and remove that levels effect. And I'm going to create a stencil alpha around everything. So that way we'll keep all of the effects underneath, but it will always keep us with a clean alpha which is gonna become important later because we're gonna use a lot of effects that would go beyond the silhouette shape that we wanna keep. So it's important to have some way of controlling that. And we'll just call that the stencil layer. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? Well, the first thing I think I wanna do is duplicate and on the bottom layer, I'm gonna grab a tint and I'm gonna come in and make the deep dark parts blue, kind of a dark blue, and then I'm gonna come in and just find a midpoint that I like. So I don't want it fully saturated, I don't want it fully blue, I want some of that color to come through. So maybe they're about 60%, that looks pretty good. And depending on your footage, that will vary. But now I'm gonna take a separate tint effect and I'm gonna take the whites and I'm gonna darken them up. Something like a dark blue there. That looks pretty good. And the next thing I wanna do is come in and grab a Venetian blind effects. And I'm gonna drop it on this darker layer on top. I'm going to set its direction to 90 degrees. Let's have the transition at 50% complete. And then we'll just change the width until we find something that looks pretty good. Maybe about six. And I want a little bit of feather on it, just a touch. There we go. That's already starting to look pretty cool. But we need to start adding in some of the distortion lines that happen over the course of the hologram. There's always these scan lines that we talked about earlier. So to do that, I'm gonna grab a white solid I'm going to call this the wide scan line. And I'm going to go ahead and just mask off a piece here in the middle. Let's drop it below our stencil. And let's change its mode to add. And then we'll just come on down here. And let's add a little feather to this guy. There we go. And let's go ahead and actually bring it down a little more, maybe 20%. We're not looking for anything too, too crazy here. There we go. And to animate it, what I can do is just grab an offset. And I can come in here on the first frame, set a keyframe, and then I'll bring it down, let's say 10,000. Let's see how that looks and we'll just check its speed. Probably too fast. So let's go ahead and move it back to 5,000. I 
There we go, that's looking better. But what I would like to do is give it a little bit of wiggle on its own because right now it's moving perfectly smooth down the silhouette. And the more distorted this effect becomes, the better it becomes. So let's go ahead, instead of adding it to the position, we need to add it to the offset. Let's go one in 50 there, and I bet we'll see a better result. All right, we're starting to see a little bit of it, but again, it's moving pretty slow. This one can probably be a little faster. There we go. Now we've got it acting like we want it to. All right, now that we've got that one set up, let's go ahead and duplicate it. And we're gonna take our mask and we're going to shrink it down until it's a nice thin white line. And we're gonna just come in and change our offset a bit so that these two do not move at the same time. So maybe drop it back a thousand. And for this one, I think that amount of wiggle is too much. So let's drop this one down to maybe 30. There we go. And I'd like it to be a little brighter. Just like it's constantly scanning through the image, trying to refresh. Let's maybe split that difference. There we go. And we'll call this the thin, thin scan line. All right, now the next thing I wanna start adding in is a little bit of glow. So I'm gonna create an adjustment layer, call it my glow layer, and I'm just gonna grab a glow effect, drop it on, and we're gonna come down here, make it pretty wide. Just want this to feel a little blown out. Now let's go ahead and add a little opacity wiggle to this one and maybe go at three and 25. Or maybe let's double that to six. There we go. Looks like there's a little bit of chromatic action happening up in the highlights, which is always nice. So let's go ahead and let's just boost that intensity a little bit, see how that looks. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's time to add the heavy distortion. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna create another adjustment layer, and I'm gonna call this noise. And I'm just gonna come in, grab a noise effect, drop it on, and I don't want colored noise. And maybe 20%, that looks pretty good. I think in between the darker tint of the scan line and the actual effect itself is where this is going to look best. So let's go ahead and bring down its intensity a little bit. Maybe 65%. And you guessed it, one more wiggle. So we'll go with five and maybe, maybe 40. Make this one really kind of come in and out. There we go. Nice staticky extra effect happening. And 
and we're going to add another one here and we're just going to call this the turbulent displace. And this is going to give us a nice little bit of wiggle on the whole image. We'll drop that on and we'll make the size fairly small. Maybe something like 10. And in the amount, let's go ahead and bring that down as well. Maybe 20. That looks pretty good. And if we come into our evolution and we animate this over time and maybe two times over the course of this shot, there we go. That's looking pretty darn good. And the last thing I want to do for the distortion effect is come in here and I'm going to add another blinds effect. There we go. And this one will also be 50 and at 90 degrees, but I'm going to want to keep this one wider than the first. And let's go ahead and feather this one out a bit more. And we'll bring the effect opacity down. Just to where we can start to see it a little bit, but not so much that it's going to destroy seeing the main image. And then if we add just a little bit of wiggle to this one in its position, maybe three and five, nothing huge. We should start to get a little more breakup in those lines, which looks nice and organic. Like it just can't quite register itself. Let's try 10. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, the last thing I'd like to do for this effect is add a glow around the edges. And to do that, I'm going to take two copies of my main footage and I'm going to make one an inverted alpha of the original. So we've just got a little thin outline here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pre-comp this to the line. And if you're familiar with any of our bootcamp tutorials, this is a modified version of the light wrap. So I'm gonna come in, grab my mat choker. And I'll go negative with it. And let's go ahead and add a fast blur on top of that. And if we bring it back in and do an additive mode, we should start to get a little more glow. But let's go ahead and grab my curves and let's boost this up a bit. Give it a little more oomph. And let's maybe take a fill and drop it all the way at the beginning. And we can bring in a little more of a pale, pale blue for this. And we'll just find where we think that color looks about right. And I'm liking that a bit. That's looking pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and see if we can boost this up a little more without getting too obnoxious. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Let's take a preview.
And there we go. I think that's looking really good. The last thing we need to do is come in here and we're going to pre-comp everything. And we'll call this the effect. And I'm going to come down to my raster folder and grab our background. And now we've got the background composited in, but we need to have a little more transparency. So I'm gonna take the effect. First layer, I'm gonna to set to the screen mode, but you can see that all the bright spots are completely blowing out. So with the bottom footage, what I'll do is I'm gonna come in and add another fill to that, which I'll make black. And again, looks like nothing's changed, but now I have the ability to come in and control the amount of transparency in the image. So somewhere around 90, I think is about right. It's transparent, but not overly transparent. And I think that looks pretty smart. All right, I think we have a very convincing little hologram here. I think what I might wanna do over the whole image as a last touch is add one more glow just to tie some things together. So I'll go ahead and blow it out quite a bit and I'll grab the threshold, bring it back down and drop the intensity a little bit. And there you go, a hologram effect you can be proud to show your friends. Hopefully, if you're making your own Star Wars video anytime soon, you'll be able to use this effect. And even if you're not making your own Star Wars video, just throw it into everything you do. So I hope you've had fun watching this one. I hope you've learned something you can use in your work. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Facebook, Google Plus, or in the comments. There's more tutorials and assets for you to use in your work over at pixelbump.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go and create.